Good afternoon, everybody on Educated Economist here. So I was just reading this Yahoo Finance article talking about how this is going to be the deepest recession on record. They're, they got the research from a, a Bank of America, I guess some, some research from Bank of America. And in this research, they are saying that the first quarter of GDP is going to decline 7%, followed by 30%, followed by another 1%. So the first three quarters are going to be cumulative of 10% drop in GDP, followed by a 30% increase. In this article, they also mentioned that there's going to be a 15% unemployment. And the Federal Reserve is already talking about 32%, and I think it's going to be a lot higher. So the damage that's going to take place here over the next three quarters is going to be intense. And as far as the recovery goes, you know, it was a different time during the recessions because people wanted to go and hang out. They wanted to go to the restaurants. They wanted to go shopping. They wanted to do things out there in public. And right now, people are so scared of being next to each other or going out to the restaurants. I mean, I work retail, and we get a lot of phone calls from people asking, how are you handling the social distancing? Are you making people stay six feet apart from each other? It's like... The recovery from this is going to be very difficult when the market opens back up, when the businesses start to open back up. The damage that is being done right now is not going to allow just a snapback recovery. It's not like everybody's going to be like, oh, okay, great. Now we can go back to the business as usual. It's not going to happen like that. See, all these forbearances and these loans and different things that businesses are going to take and people are going to take out on their mortgages and stuff like that, that's going to take time to heal. And so even if we have a 1% decline in the third quarter in GDP, it's going to take a lot more in the fourth quarter to get to 30%. I mean, that's my opinion. People are not going to go run, rushing out there and just start going back to business as usual. They're not going to fill the restaurants. They're not going to be filling up the theaters again. They're going to have this mindset that everybody around them makes them sick. Not to mention the damage that's going to be done to their pocketbooks. So the recovery is going to take a long time and it's going to be very slow. You know... I think a lot of times researchers don't think of the average person and what their mindset is. A lot of these people have a lot of money. And they think, no, once everything opens back up again, we can just go and just start spending money and everybody will just spend money like usual. Well, they might because they have it. But all of us down here who are going to suffer with joblessness, it takes a long time to recover from that. You just don't all of a sudden just go back to work and all of a sudden you can just go and start spending money like you once did. You have to make up for all that lost time. One of the other articles I was reading is about how this mortgage, the, the damage in the mortgage, real estate, housing, all that is going to be a lot deeper than what the statistics are saying. Because... When a, what a, what's happening a lot, and I've done a video on this in the past, and this is a great article. I'll leave, I'll leave a, a link down in the descriptions for all these. What this article is talking about is that when somebody starts to go into default on their house or they start missing payments and they do a readjustment of their loan, they're no longer in foreclosure or they're no longer even in default and they're not marked as default. They're in their house. They may have not made a payment on it, but they're not defaulting and they're not in foreclosure. And a lot of these people who have been in this case where they didn't make a payment for three months or four months or whatever it is, and they do a readjustment on their loan, they're not counted as being a problem. And they can do this over and over again until they finally, you know, the bank says, okay, we're not going to do this anymore for you. But I've heard of people who have missed payments after payment after payment and they do a readjustment on their loan and they make one payment or two payments and then they go and start going delinquent on their loans again. And then they go and do this readjustment. And every time they do this, they're not counted. 
So the amount of people out there who have been living in houses basically without paying for them or paying very little, just playing this game of just rolling these things over, is huge. So the amount of people who are delinquent on their houses is a lot more than what the statistics are showing. And this article does a great job of explaining that. So I think about that. I think about how this recovery is going to take place because these businesses who are suffering right now, I drove through town today and I'd look to see how many businesses were open. And there is very few. The pawn shop was open. The hardware store was open. The restaurants, they had signs in their windows that says, call in for carry out or take out. Very few restaurants are operating right now. I look inside the windows as I drove by and there's chairs up on the tables. Nobody's working in those things. The damage that is being done to those businesses is huge. If they are operating in the red right now, that is the only way they're going to operate for the next three months. And if they can survive that, the amount of time that it's going to take for those people to recover is going to be huge. And if they don't fill those tables up, they're not going to make it, if they can even make it that long. You know, something else that my, uh, my wife told me, because she, she used to work in the business, in the, in the restaurant industry, she was like, a lot of these restaurants that have closed up, it takes a lot to reestablish that restaurant, to fill the coolers up, to restock everything that they need. That is a huge investment. And so when they get this loan right now just to basically pay the rent, the amount that they need to reestablish that business and get going again is huge. It's not going to be a snap back recovery. There's no way it can happen if this goes on for, th for three quarters, for nine months. You know, like I said, I think a lot of these people are delusional. I really do. I just don't think they actually have a concept of what it's like to be down here in the pits. To be down there where you're like struggling to come up with the amount of money to even just go off and buy the basic necessities. Where you have to wait for payday to get a roll of toilet paper. To be completely broke and yet you still have to make it to work. Hoping that that tank of gas will get you there. I lived my life like that for a long time. For many years. There was times where I had a parked car because I couldn't put gas in it and I walked to work. Until payday came and then I could fill the car up again. I think a lot of these guys don't understand that concept. Like they can, like they're like, oh, I just don't get it. I don't understand. Like they can't fathom that idea. You know, today we saw some really th strange things happen in the market. 6.6 .6 million people filed for unemployment. First time unemployment. This is like, what, 10 million people now who are filing for unemployment from last week to this week, if I got my numbers right. And the markets went up today. Does that make any sense that the markets would go up on bad news? How many times have we seen this take place? It's almost as if there are people ready and prepared to inject money into this market during times of bad news. Because basically, this kind of news typically would drop the markets. We saw gold and silver rally today. We saw Bitcoin rally today earlier. I forget what the rise was on it, but there was a huge run in Bitcoin too. People are getting out of their, like typical people are getting out of cash and moving into safe havens because they know that there's going to be inflation coming at some point. You know, the efforts of the Federal Reserve to try and inject money into this system is going to cause way more damage in the end. At some point, the people are going to just give up on this dollar and they're going to get any asset they can find. Any safe haven asset. And if the prices keep dropping on certain items, they're not going to run to them. I mean, corporations right now, I mean, what, is it really smart? If we are going to be having three quarters of negative GDP growth, 7%, 30%, and 1% over the next nine months, 
Does it seem like a logical idea to go ahead and invest money into the stock market, into these businesses? I mean, I guess if it was a repo business, then that would probably make sense. If they were going to like repossess cars or repossess houses or something like that. I mean, if you could find a company like that to invest in, I guess that would probably be a good deal. But I do not see how the stock market could rally on bad news like that. That doesn't make any sense to me. But that article talking about the delinquencies and how they prevent that from becoming an actual delinquency. People who do not make payments on their house and are able to roll that, you know, to reestablish a new loan and clear themselves off the delinquency books. That was a very interesting article. You guys should go and take a look at that one. Yeah. Anyhow. Uneducated economist. You guys let me know.